Hi and welcome. I love air dry clay and I love to try things that are new to me. I have this DAS air dry clay and I'm going to be trying this out today. It's a really heavily pigmented blue air dry clay. This is a product that is new to me and when discovering how to use this everyone seems to use it for the marble effect. So today I'd like to try something a little bit different and see how this gets on. Look at that absolutely wonderful colour, there are going to be so many uses for this. It cuts lovely with the knife and it just feels that little bit drier than regular air dry clay. I'll just give it a knead and then we can test it. Have you used this DAS idea mix before? If you have let me know in the comments below what you think. As I said earlier it's very pigmented and so as we roll it in our hands that does transfer to our fingers but it will wash off really easily. You can see from here and from the packet that it will marble our air dry clay really well but I like to do something a little bit different with it today. Now that I've kneaded the clay it does roll out really lovely and smooth and as you can see here I can actually roll it really quite thin and it still stays together really lovely and you can see that shine on it that it does have a nice amount of moisture and oil in there. This DAS product does come in other colours other than blue, I just thought the blue was the most striking. I know I always say not to roll your air dry clay out so thin but I'm going to try a little different technique with it today so I do want it quite thin. I'm going to use this blue to create a lovely design in the air dry clay which is not the marble effect. I have my pizza wheel here and I'm just randomly cutting up the clay to see how easy it is to cut some small triangle shapes. This heavily pigmented air dry clay can also be used with the white air dry clay to colour it. As I play and experiment with this clay I can see so many uses for it, it really is lovely. Twisting and rolling it together, this is how you make the marble effect and you could create so many air dry clay projects with this. You could add multiple colours in for a really great effect. You could cut this out, let this dry, add some varnish and it's beautiful in itself. But that's not the effect I want today so I'm going to carry on mixing and turn this into a full bodied colour. So now I have two shades of blue to work with and have rolled these out thinly so that I can cut some small triangles. You can of course use these and cut some various different shapes, make it thicker and make your items out of this. I cut some of the clay into triangles while it was wet and now I've let it dry. I can actually cut the dry clay with a knife but it is a little bit trickier. I dried out the thin sheets of this air dry clay because I wanted to crumple them up and see what happened when I crumpled them up to see if I could get some nice little shards and pieces to use within the air dry clay. Today I'm going to make an air dry clay vase where I can add a vessel of water so that it can be used for fresh flowers. To make a template I folded a piece of paper in half, cut out half of my desired shape and there I have a lovely symmetrical vase shape. You can of course do absolutely any shape you wish, have a play and an experiment. I'm taking about 350 grams of white air dry clay. Fresh from the packet it's lovely and soft and smooth and I just like to give it a, a slap and a knead and then to lose all of those little cracks we can use our thumb and smooth them out. I really do love creating with air dry clay as there's just so many different uses and possibilities with it. A good air dry clay that is straight out of the packet really should be this lovely and easy to use. DAS don't sponsor me to say this but it really is my favourite. If you want both sides of your clay to be seen I always like to turn mine over and check and make sure there's no blemishes and smooth these out before completing the top side. I want to roll the clay out fairly thick but my template does need to fit on there. This will just about do and I'm going to roughly cut out the shape as I am going to be rolling this again in a little while. This is me just experimenting and having a play and seeing what will happen with this different effect. 
So we have our fresh and wet air dry clay and the scattered on little triangles that are dry and I'm going to see if I can make a nice design with these. I don't want any of the dry pieces to land on top of each other so I'm just slightly moving them so that they're not but I've created a nice random and scattered pattern. Now that I have enough triangles on there I've taken the rolling pin and I'm rolling these triangles into the wet clay and they seem to be holding in place at the moment. My main aim with these videos is for you to try new things, get creative and then just enjoy this creative process. Using my template and a table knife I cut out the design. It's a little bit trickier to cut over those hard pieces but just work around them and cut the shape. An alternative way would be to cut the exact design shape first and then add your little pieces in over the top of that. I just knew I was going to be rolling it again so I wanted this shape and so that's why I did it in this way. But always have a play, it doesn't have to be exactly one way and just see what happens. Just smoothing the clay out a little bit before I let it dry. The blue shards of clay that I crumbled up, I did a little test piece with these and you know the air dry clay actually grips these pieces really well and it just gives a little bit of a different effect so you can go for the crumpled up ones or add some of these triangles like I did. If you want to make a flat piece I'd leave it to dry as it is and that could be a good first option the first time you try out this technique but I'm going to make this into a vase so I'm just flipping it over making sure all those triangular pieces stay in place. I've cut some slabs of clay and now it's time to attach these to the front. I'm using the score and slip method like I do in lots of my videos so I am scoring both edges that join together, adding a small amount of slip in between. I tease and bend the slab around and I'm going to join these two together. Really take your time during this process as it really does take quite a little bit of practice. I do recommend starting quite simple if you are a beginner. And also if you make all of the walls of the clay quite a bit thicker it does become that little bit easier to manage. Using a table knife I bring one side of the clay up to the other and smooth this out and we get a nice connection in that way. You can use the tiniest amount of water on your fingers and smooth out the clay. Or you can of course leave it rustic or I have another video where I show you where I add lots of different textures so have a look at this if you want to add some nice rustic textures where you don't need to make it all smooth if that's what you find really quite hard or if that's just what you'd like to do. I've smoothed this join together and now I'm adding a bit of slip and I'm adding a thin coil of clay so that I can add this as my joining method just to make sure it's joined fully. Again using a simple table knife to bring these two sides together. A process to take your time with and enjoy. Then you can add another bit of water on your finger and smooth this out. I've not made this shape vase before but I'm loving how it's turning out. And I'm going to repeat the same for the other side. Again using the score, slip and coil method. I'm trying something new out with this vase. I'm not going to make it into a full complete vase. I'm going to make a space at the back to allow a little vessel of water to be placed in that can be changed easily and regularly. I'm just scoring the clay where I'm going to add some more clay but at this stage I'm letting it dry for that little bit just to firm up so that it's not too wet. It's a cool day and I've left this for about three hours. The back of my pot is going to be this small section but you could make it that little bit more decorative if you wish and cut a shape like this and therefore have a circular space because we're going to have this as our gap to put our little water vessel. But I'm going to go for a simple small back as you're not actually going to see this as I'm going to put it up on my mantelpiece. Therefore last minute I've decided not to attach it to where I've scored the clay. I'm going to make it fit within there so that you can't see it from the sides. So it's up to you with your design, see how it works. Now that the main body of the vase has firmed up a bit, 
it's slightly easier to manoeuvre and handle because it's not so fragile so it's still damp and it's still wet and it's still got plenty of drying to do but I can add this section of clay in with a little bit more confidence and so you can always do this when working with air dry clay. The area here is caving in just a little bit so I'm adding a coil of clay and smoothing it and making this my join. And so we can do this, add where we need to, take away where you need to take away and just build up the, that design so that it works and so that it's as you want it to be. I'm soon going to let this dry and so when I let it dry I have this little sponge and I'm just using that as a spacer so that it doesn't dry all domed. My vase has been drying on some baking parchment here for about a day now so that was the moment of truth and I'm quite impressed that those little triangles have actually stayed stuck and they're in place and I'm going to let it dry this way up for another day and then turn it once again. If any of the triangles or any of your shapes have come unstuck then I just have a little bit of white glue here and I'm adding these back in place and they will glue right back there in place. Luckily only about three or four have come out so I think that was pretty lucky. Are you feeling inspired to have a go yourself? Please do comment below and let me know what you'd be making. My vase is now completely dry and I'm going to add a good thick layer, probably two or three coats of a good thick varnish. This varnish will help hold it all together and stop any of those little pieces that attempted to fall out and keep it all together as one lovely piece. Finding a suitable varnish for air dry clay is one of those questions I get asked all the time. I do think it is a lot down to personal preference and I must do a new video adding my new thoughts on those. So far I've just varnished the front face to keep all those little pieces intact and now I can go to the back and take my sandpaper and smooth everything else out. As I said earlier it's your preference you can also leave it rustic too. This is a small nail file that I also like to use but just when sanding make sure you use a mask and you don't inhale any of that dust. I'm complete in a well ventilated area. Just like when varnishing make sure you're in a well ventilated area and wear a mask if necessary. Varnish all sides and then when complete we can add a little vessel of water at the back here and add our fresh flowers into there. And so there's another alternative to an air dry clay vase that can be used for fresh flowers. So with air dry clay experiment, play, try new things and just enjoy the process. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next creative videos. Bye for now.